So when the, we had different people, Nishnabe people that carried these belts, they had to do a lot of memorization and they had to remember a lot of, a lot of the, the words that went with this. And they, all, they were expected to, to do this. And a lot of non-native people wrote about it. And they said, it's amazing to see the Anishinaabe people or the Haudenosaunee people when they come to a conference. They don't know letters. They don't know numbers, they say. They don't know any writing. He said, so what they do is they have one man, one young man, another young man, and another young man who is assigned to memorize certain parts of that speech that is given. So it would have been this guy's job to learn the first part, this guy's job to learn the next part, and then this guy's job to learn the next part. And then these three get together again, and then they recite it with each other. And then they say, the non-native people used to say, it's with remarkable accuracy that when they come back the following year or the year after, that they're able to say exactly what was said at that time. But it was because they worked at it, they used their mind, their ears, their eyes, and their mouth, of course, and their heart. So they would say that <coughs> everyone memorized the, the whole speech, but these three were the ones that went to the meeting. These three come back to the community. They meet with their elders. Then they tell them what went on, and they recite what, was, what they were, were told to memorize, and then the rest of their community knows that. So where are you from? Yeah. So like today, if it was your job, you would have had to memorize this part. And the rest of your people aren't here today. But when you go home, then that's when you got to tell them that part. And then if you're with her, you tell them the next part. So that you have a meeting about it, and then you all share what went on at that treaty meeting or that council. That's how this was done back then. And then if this was exchanged, then that's when you know how far you were to talk about and how far the next person was to talk about and the following person tell you all put it all together and nobody at that time were writing they weren't writing any of this down they used their mind and their heart for this and their ears so that's why they would say sometimes and it was a, a, an Odawa chief by the name of Siganok who said about this particular belt he said that Sir William Johnson, who was what we would call the first minister of Indian affairs. Now we have a minister of Indian affairs. Anybody know her name? Oh, I, should, I shouldn't have said her name. Now you gave you a clue. Anybody know her name? Carolyn Bennett. So Carolyn Bennett's predecessor from long ago was the one that gave us this belt on behalf of the King of England, King George III. And he gave us this belt. And then when a Siganok recited this, he said, you see that belt, the body of my words. That's what, how they would refer to these belts, the body of my words or the spirit of my talk. So they knew to look at this, what this all meant, and they were able to recite that. And they referred to it as being a, a conveyor of words, just like how a piece of paper did that as well. So some of the first treaties or land sessions, like the, the treaty for the island of Michelin-Mackinac, there was a long wampum belt that went with it, as well as a treaty where they marked their dodems down on it. And then the other thing that they would do is uh, they would then mark on their what the transaction was. And so they were able to memorize that. But then do you know what happens when somebody takes this away? and you memorize this part, and then you memorize this part, and then somebody memorize the other part, and then they take this away and they put it in a museum. And then you don't get to take it to Garden River, and you don't get to visit with it and take it to your old people. What happens? You forget about it. You don't get to talk about it. You don't get to share it. Then you end up forgetting about it, and then that's what happened with us. So the original 
belt of this, this is called the covenant chain wampum belt. And it was kept by the Odawa people who were initially around what they call Larbor Cross, which is at, now they call that place Harbor Springs or Cross Village on the American side of the, the river here. And it was the Odawa people that were given this belt in 1764. But what Sir William Johnson did at that time, he says in the meeting at Niagara, this was all conducted at Niagara to conclude or to stop the war that is called Pontiac's War. So he had this belt made. Sir William Johnson had this belt made and he met with who he called the Western Nations. And he said, now I, I, all that is left for us to do is to tie our hands together in friendship and to, for you to take hold of the covenant chain. And they said he had a, a belt there. I forget how many feet long he said it was at that time. And he says, I make this belt, I tie one end of this belt at the falls of Sault Ste. Marie. The other end of this belt, I tie to my house at Johnson, uh, Johnsonville in New York State. And he says, and if there's anything that you want from me, or if there's any problems that you have, any time you need to seek justice, shake this belt, and I know that you want something. So he said he put this down, and then he says, one, he told the Ojibwe chief to, to take this. He didn't write down who the Ojibwe chief was at that time, but he said the Ojibwe chief got up, at Niagara in 1764, and he says, this belt should not belong at Sault Ste. Marie. It should actually belong and be kept with our older brother, the Odawa, at the island of Michilimackinac. And then, so that's why this belt ended up being under the care of the Odawa people at Michilimackinac. So to be a real fast retelling of history, the Odawa keep this from 1764 all the way up to 1884. And then after that, that's the last sighting of the original belt of this. And then the chiefs all would get together and they actually had a meeting at Garden River in 1869 and they had this belt out. And they wrote down all their grievances. Because what this belt, there's a lot of people talk about this belt now and they say it represents alliance and friendship. And it does represent that. But it actually represents our Aboriginal title to the land. It actually also represents our Aboriginal right to hunt and fish. And it also represents that the, Jogna, the British are going to protect, them, protect us from themselves. They said they would protect us from themselves. That anybody who was mining or speculating or fur trading and trying to cheat us. They said it was the king's representative, the job of the king's representative to intercede and to bring us justice. So that's what this belt means. It means a lot more than just friendship and unity. It actually represents our Aboriginal title. And that's why Signoc said when he mentioned this, that the body of my words, the spirit of my words, you see that belt and he says, I clothe your land and you'll never be poor. You'll never sink into poverty, he says, with this belt. <laughs>